bright duty every student matters now let's see what was planning commission uh, these days one new thing has been introduced that is called niti aayog it means policy and aayog means commission so now we have policy commission but before that the institution which was planning all the things was planning commission composition of planning commission the planning commission had been working under the chairmanship of the prime minister from the very beginning and the deputy chairmanship had usually gone to known economists or the eminent financial experts including ashok mehta dt lakdawal madhu dandwande kc pant and others another members of the commission had charge of subjects and departments like agriculture industry employment education and many more and the planning commission had a full fledged secretariat consisting of a secretary joint secretary senior specialist and chiefs of information and publicity now what was the role and function of the commission main task of the planning commission was as follows to make an assessment of country's resource that means they wanted to see what kind of resources do we have the man made and the natural both and how we could use them so before formulating the plan we had to assess the country's capital and human such as manpower wealth material goods minerals land and water resources it is a very big task just you have to measure the uh, geographical boundaries from length to breadth and height to width that what is the amount of resources we could use is that potential or not is that has that worth or not what is the manpower what is the wealth and how could we use it what is the technology could be used then plan formulation the planning commission formulated the plan which has to be approved by the national development council then to determine priorities for various programs broadly speaking all the plans have had similar objectives despite that we may see variations in the priorities of different plans and for instance top priority was given to agriculture in the first plan and the main objective of the second plan were rapid industrialization and the development of basic and heavy industry why it was so because see many people they were involved in the agriculture only now they wanted to give like that means government of india wanted to give employment to its manpower so this was the main objective of the second plan that rapid industrialization will improve the economic growth as well as the employment and it will rectify the poverty as well then the long term strategy of development as already stated different priorities are chalked out for different plans but the planning commission kept a constant watch at long term strategy so that the entire socio economic structure could be suitably changed and public sector and private sector were supposed to be supplementary and complementary to each other in our economy but income from the capital invested in public sector undertakings had been dismally low as a result the government announced on july 24 1991 a new economic policy that abolished the licensing system in most of the area now planning commission is changed into niti aayog that is what i was telling you let's see what are the objectives why it has been made now the abolition of planning commission after independence a planning commission based on socialist model was formed for the plan development of india but in the era of globalization especially in the 21st century it was becoming ineffective and irrelevant particularly in uh, terms of coping with the press challenging of the development So during Independence Day speech on 15th August 2014 Prime Minister Narendra Modi talked about the abolition of planning commission Now the establishment of Niti Aayog Niti Aayog was constituted in the place of planning commission and 1st January 2015 with the objective of providing the necessary and technical advice to the union government regarding policy making the central and the state levels The Prime Minister of India is the ex officio chairman of Niti Aayog and he appoints the vice chairperson of Niti Aayog. The first vice chairperson of Niti Aayog was Arvind Panagariya. Dr Rajiv Kumar is the current vice chairperson of Niti Aayog. Now how the Niti Aayog works what are the functions to harmonize the interest of national security and the economic policy to prepare strategic and long term framework of policy and program. so that people could feel secured in their nation and they must get more and more chances and opportunities of better employment so that people should have better living status 
which would improve the economic condition of the country as well so all this come under the economic policy niti aayog acts as a think tank of the union government by automatic adopting a bottom up approach why it is think tank because it thinks about all the ideas and the policies and they make a framework how to work for the government union and the central sorry state the niti aayog acts in the spirit of cooperative federalism as it ensures equal participation of states in the country and is proving that federally uh, they could uh, choose the strategies and they could divide the jobs now the national development council what was the history of national development council the first meeting was chaired by prime minister jawaharlal nehru on 8 or 9 november 19 Two so far, fifty seventh meeting had been at the fifty seventh meeting of National Development Council was held on twenty seventh December two thousand twelve at Vidhan Bhavan, New Delhi. What were the objectives? To secure cooperation of the state in the execution of the plan, to strengthen and mobilize the effort and resources of the nation in support of the plan. Because you see, when something has to be executed, the cooperation is required. if something has been done by central government without state government it cannot be executed so to secure the cooperation this plan was made so strengthen and mobilize the effort and resource of the nation of the plan that means you have to make it very strengthened and you have to mobilize also the resources and all so for the support of the plan it it, uh, it is required to promote common economic policies in all the spheres also to ensure the balance and rapid development of all the parts of the country by these policies were made like so that the things could be very balanced and the development could happen in a very speedy way now the functions to prescribe guidelines for the formulation of the national plan including the assessment of the risk to consider the national plan as formulated by the niti aayog to make an assessment of resources that are required for implementing the plan and to suggest measures for argument to consider important questions of social and economic policies affecting national development composition the national development council is presided over by the prime minister of india and includes all union ministers chief ministers of all the states and administrators of union territories and the members of my niti aayog minister of states with the independent charges are also invited to the deliberations of the council now the changing nature of india's economic development security five year plan stressed on heavy industries it was drafted by a team of economists and planners under the leadership of bc mahalanobi and before his plan was finalized the congress party held its session at awadi it declared that the social pattern of the society was its goal and this was reflected in the second plan the government imposed substantial tariffs on the import in order to protect domestic industries that is are the policies for the import but an industry attracted more investment than the agriculture the possibility of food shortage looked large indian planners found balancing industry and the agriculture really difficult now the agriculture versus industry gandhi and economists like chesi kumar appa he proposed an alternative blueprint that put greater emphasis on the rural industrialization because gandhi ji was in favor of all rtc and chaudhry charan singh a congress leader who later broke from the party to form bharti lok dal forcefully articulated the case for keeping agriculture at the center of planning for india public versus private sector india adopted a mixed economy much of the agriculture trade and industry were left in the private hands critics argued that the planners refused to provide private sector with enough space and the stimulus to grow the state intervention ended up creating a new middle class that enjoyed the privileges of high salaries but without ac- accountability the first five year plans niti aayog makes the five year plannings and here the planning commission makes the first five year plan and which was in the year 1951 to 56 thought to get the country's economy out of the cycle of poverty K N Raj, a young economist involved in drafting the plan, and argued that India should hasten slowly for the first two decades, as a fast rate of development might endanger democracy. Because democracy spreading was also a big issue in India, people were not that much literate or educated to understand the concept of democracy. So he was right on his part that first two decades, like at least ten years, were required for the 
slow development so that people will gradually move or migrate from agriculture to the secondary sector or the tertiary sector so people had to understand it first five year plan was from 51 to 56 it was presented by pandit jawaharlal nehru and total outlay was rupees 2069 crores and target growth rate was 2.1% in the gross domestic product the first five year plan addressed mainly the agrarian sector including investment in dams and irrigation agriculture sector was hit hardest by partition and needed urgent attention two allocations were made for large scale projects like bhapta tangal dam and the plan identified the pattern of land distribution in the country as a principal obstacle in the way of agriculture growth one of the basic aim of the plan was to raise the level of national income which could be possibly only if people save money than that they spent but there was food crisis as well the agricultural situation went from bad to worse in 1960s already the rate of growth of food grain production in the 1940s and 50s was barely staying above rate of population see the people were dying of malnutrition it was a great problematic and trauma traumatic condition between 65 to 67 severe droughts occurred in many parts this was also the period when the country faced two wars and foreign exchange crisis all this resulted in a severe for food shortage and famine like conditions in many parts of the country it was in bihar that the food crisis was most acutely felt the state faced a near famine situation the food shortage was significant in all districts of bihar with nine districts producing less than half of their normal output five of these districts in fact produced less than one third of the what they produced and normally food deprivation subsequently led to acute and widespread malnutrition it was estimated that the calorie intake dropped from 2200 per capita per to as low as 1200 in many regions of the state and death rate in bihar in 1967 was 34% higher than the number of deaths that occurred the following year food prices also hit a high in bihar during the year even when compared with the north indian states the government had zoning policies that prohibited trade of food across states the poorest sections of the society suffered the most the food crisis had many consequences the government had to import wheat and had to accept foreign aid because without their help it was not possible to provide food to the people of india and us now the first priority of the planners was to somehow attain self sufficiency in food the entire planning process and sense of optimism and pride associated with it suffered a setback now from a grain deficient nation to food security for all when the country was facing the food crisis all of a sudden it was decided to have green revolution so that we can just uh, compatible uh, with the necessity of the people and green revolution was started Dr M S Swaminathan from India led to green revolution as a project director and Dr Norman Borlong from Mexico supported the green revolution through the introduction of high yielding variety of wheat it was a new chapter starting in indian agriculture what was the green revolution it was introduced to bring about revolutionary changes in agriculture especially in food grains like wheat and rice to production through high yielding variety of seeds fertilizers and scientific irrigation that means the high yielding variety of each and everything which was compatible with the agriculture of india like seeds fertilizers and scientific irrigation so that the it could benefit the farmers as well as the production of the country so that we can fulfill the requirement of the domestic use and then the surplus could be sold out the government offered yielding varieties of Uh, seeds fertilizers pesticides and better irrigation facilities as subsidized price the government fixed the prices also to purchase the produce of farmers at a given price and the positive results were in many parts the stark contrast between the poor peasantry and the landlords reduced conditions favorable for left wing organizing and to organize the poor peasants the green revolution also resulted in the rise of what is called the middle peasant sector these were farmers while medium sized land holding who benefited from the changes and soon emerged politically influential and the many parts of the country but there were few negative ones, uh, results also the, this created a stark contrast between the poor peasantry and the land the poor were becoming more poor and the rich were becoming more rich the green revolution delivered only a moderate agricultural growth that is a rise in rice and 
production by raising availability of food grains in the country, but increase polarization between classes and regions. Some regions like Punjab, Haryana, and Western Uttar Pradesh became agriculturally prosperous, while others remain backward. Few land reforms were also there. In the agrarian sector, this period witnessed a serious attempt at land reforms and perhaps the most significant and successful of these was the abolition of the colonial system of the Mindari. The Bold Act not only released land from the clutches of a class that had little interest in agriculture, it also reduced the capacity of the landlords to dominate politics. Attempt at consolidation of land bringing become viable for agriculture were also fairly successful. So the laws were made to put an upper limit or ceiling to how much agricultural land one person could own people with access land managed to evade the law. This could happen only if the rural landless poor were mobilized but the landowners were very powerful and wielded the considerable political influence. Therefore, many proposals for land reforms were either not translated into laws when made into laws they remain only on paper. Now, this shows that the economic policy is part of the actual political situation in the society. It also shows that in spite of good wishes of some top leaders, the dominant social groups would always effectively control policy making and implementation. Now, there was white revolution also. This white revolution or operation flood relates to the rapid development in milk production that took place in India after mid 1960s. This is variation of the name Green Revolution used earlier to describe rapid development in agricultural production in India, but now the rapid development in the milk plants. A name closely associated with White Revolution is Dr. Varghese and Korean. This is because the origins of White Revolution can be traced to the efforts of Dr. Kugrain at Kaira District Cooperative Milk Producer Union situated in named in Gujarat state. This organization is better known as the brand name of its product Amul. And father of white uh, revolution, Dr. Varghese Kuren, is the man behind the success of Amul. He is called the father of the white revolution in India and he is also known as the milkman. Kuren set up the Anand model of cooperative dairy development, engineered the white revolution in India and made India the largest milk producer in the world. Now at the end of the chapter, I would like to discuss few cartoon based questions. See, this is the cartoon. What message does the cartoon convey? Cartoon is trying to make balance between the private and public sector to maintain the growth of the economy adopted by India. And the person who is making efforts to balance both is Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India. And how was both these sectors balanced? Pandit Nehru made a balance between both sectors by adopting the model of mixed economy to coexist the private and the public sector. Another one. Uh, with the, uh, like all these people, uh, one leader is on a carpet. What does it mean? Uh, which state is clipping is taking Bihar and what is food crisis? Food crisis and unavailability of sufficient food or food shortage. And what were the main reasons for food crisis? High prices of food items, joining policy of government. And is India now sufficient in food production? Yes, due to green revolution, food grain production has been increased up to maximum extent. Now there are a few map based questions uh, this is the label to following the symbolize them as indicated like there are a few numbers given here uh, the state drawn food crisis during independence is Bihar the state adopted decentralization is Kerala the state where people protested against POSCO is Orissa the state where white revolution took place Gujarat. these are the famous personalities GAC Kumarappa his original name was Joseph Cornless Kumarappa he was an economist and chartered accountant, studied in England and USA. Follower of Mahatma Gandhi, tried to apply Gandhian principles to economic policies. Author of Economy of Performance, participated in planning process as member of planning commission. And P.C. Mahalanobis, uh, he was a scientist and statistician of international repute, founder of Indian Statistical Institute 1931. And he was the architect of the second plan supporter of rapid industrialization, an active role of sector. I hope you all would have understood the concept and you will use this video as a support material.